Now I don't really like having to get in the truck from this side, especially since it has this incredible manual transmission here. So it's kind of a pain to step on over, but it does have a bench seat, so that's, that's helpful. Give this thing a cold start here. It is a cold start. Truck hasn't been running for a couple days, but it is not cold outside, I guess. That is definitely that is definitely something I like about these uh, first gen 12 valves. Man, they start up just so incredibly fast. It has been a rivalry as old as time. People arguing back and forth in the comments of YouTube videos, Instagram posts, forums. Ever since these two motors were introduced a long time ago, these two engines, a 5.9 12 valve and a 7.3 power stroke, people have often said, no, oh, this is the best one ever made. No, oh, this is the best one ever made. This one's got fewer moving parts. This one makes a little more power. I mean, you, you know what I'm saying. We are going to go side by side and compare. Now, this comparison is not to say one is better than the other because that is all a matter of personal preference and opinion. And my opinion should not dictate what you believe is more desirable in your own eyes because that is completely and solely up to you to decide because at the end of the day we have people that are absolute fans of this and would never even touch one of these and we have it the other way around where people are a huge fan of this and they would never touch one of these and uh, we're going to go into that and just give you my take this is my take my preference and i'm not going to pick or choose as much as i would normally but i'm simply going to lay out my viewpoints on the two trucks and let you guys decide in the comment section below. I would like to mention the fact that you have until Sunday, March 17th to enter to win both of these trucks at the exact same time. And not only that, this truck comes with five grand, this truck comes with five grand, 30 times entries are live, which means every $1 you spend gets you 30 entries towards winning this one. And not only that, but your entries are doubled into this giveaway right now too. So every $1 is gonna get you 30 entries into this one, as well as this one at the exact same time, which is essentially 60 times entries. And here's where it gets even better. These are two separate drawings. Now, I know there's some people that are under the impression if you enter right now, you get drawn once, you get to pick. That's not the option. Or there's two drawings and it's at the exact same time. And if you win one, you cannot win the other. That's not how it works either. The way that this is, this ends for good on March 17th. This ends for good on April 21st, but the overlapping period, which is the dual entry period, is from March 11th to March 17th, which is where you can enter for two at the exact same time. This one's ending, this one's starting, it's an overlap period. Why is that good for you? That means that when you enter right now, your name could get drawn for this one, and a few weeks later, your name could also get drawn for that one. They're two separate drawings, and since they're two separate giveaways, you could get drawn for just this one or just this one, or you could get drawn for both. So it's legitimately a dual entry in a dual winning opportunity that you are not gonna have if you enter at any other time. So just take that into consideration. When you're thinking about entering, there's no better time to enter, okay? Even if you're only wanting to enter for the Ford. If you enter now and you don't win the drawing for this truck, your name is still going to get put back in for this one when we do the drawing for that truck. It's a double entry opportunity. So there's no downside. Doesn't matter if you want this one or this one. If you enter now, you're getting entered into both giveaways at the same time, and you are going to get your name potentially drawn for this one 
and this one. What's the worst that could happen if you like this truck and not this one? The worst thing that could happen is you end up with both of them anyway, and you sell one and keep the other. That's the worst case scenario. It's not like, oh, if you win that one, you're disqualified from winning the next one. That's not how it works. The way that we set the giveaway up is that if you win, within 30 days, you're eligible to win again. So this giveaway ends more than 30 days after this one, which means you could legitimately get drawn to win that truck as well. We set that up perfectly so that you have a better opportunity to win something with your hard-earned dollars spent. And we have put in a ton of work to make sure there's plenty of options for you, to, for you guys to buy in the store. Tons of different stuff, air fresheners, jerky, detailing, clothing, bundles, cash bundles, everything. So if you wanna get entered, there's no better time and no better selection than right now. So let's just make a very brief and very simple comparison of these two trucks okay and now this is a first gen but we are going to generalize the dodge 12 valve trucks in general so from 1989 all the way to 1998 with the holy grail 12 valve that you could get we're going to make a generalized thing and then for this truck we're going to only be generalizing this around the 7.3 power stroke with the turbo diesel we're not going to be comparing it to any of the other power stroke models and we're not going to be comparing it to the idi 73s either okay so generalized comparison why do people like these trucks or at least why do i think people like these trucks the simplistic nature of the engine and if you have a five speed manual manual transmission component it's a very simple vehicle there's not much to it very easy to work on either side of the engine bay or on top everything's accessible parts are cheap super reliable you could have a bad injector or three bad injectors and still drive the truck down the road is it good for it not necessarily but you can still do it which is why people love them very little downtime very reliable even in a bad situation these things will still just keep freaking going i mean unless you literally blow the transmission which is the downfall of the automatics these things will go and they will go and go and go and go and go that's just how they are uh, people love them it's legitimately a tractor motor in a truck so there's very little go wrong why do people hate them? At least the general consensus. If you get this with an automatic, they're built like garbage. Uh, the body panels, the parts, the dash, the interior, most of the stuff you know, these trucks were built with is just kind of poor craftsmanship overall. Now, there are exceptions to this rule. A lot of times, it's just people that don't take care of their stuff. Their stuff's gonna break down quick. Uh, as you can see, this truck, you know, there's not a problem with a body panel. There's not a problem with any of it. You know, it was maintained very well. The interior is very clean. Seats are not ripped. Headliner is in perfect shape. The dash isn't busted. You know, a lot of times it comes down to, you know, maintenance as well. Sorry, the floorboard's messy. If you can see our yard, it is muddy. And so every everywhere you step, it's making squish sounds and just muddy. So I apologize for that, but there's no way to get around it at the moment. But people don't like the poor the poor craftsmanship of most of the truck aside from the engine and transmission. However, if you maintain your stuff, you keep the salt off, you make sure you're not rough on the dash, you make sure it's not sitting out in the sun, just baking the paint off, stuff like that. Like these trucks, general rule of thumb, it don't matter if it's a, a 90s Dodge or a 90s Ford, you don't take care of it. You're gonna think it's poor craftsmanship and really it's poor ownership. So overall though, that's the defeat with these trucks is people say that they can't take as much abuse in terms of all the rest of the truck around the motor and transmission, the manual transmission. Um, for the most part, people just complain about that stuff being poor craftsmanship. Now, is it poor craftsmanship? Maybe there's there's some elements of that that is definitely true, um, but I definitely think that it really comes down to people wanting to neglect their stuff and being upset when it doesn't hold up is greatly part of that issue because honestly you know everybody i know that has a dodge truck that takes care of their stuff they don't have problems with them it's all the people that you know don't know how to take care of their stuff and they're surprised when it you know starts to fall apart it's like dude you can't you can't do that if you want your things to last but that's the general consensus and again there are a lot of elements to that that are true but a lot of it could be ownership issues as well but love the engine, love the transmission. A lot of people hate the build quality of the first and second gen 12 valves in general. When it comes to these trucks, there's a lot of different things. A, I don't foresee the engine and transmission 
necessarily being like way better. I don't think I'm going to say that they're worse because that would be me being just biased because I haven't owned one of these as long as I've owned stuff like this. But I'm just going to be kind of neutral on the engine transmission thing. However, I did grow up with a 7.3 Power Stroke and I cannot argue that that thing pretty much never had an engine problem, any kind of mechanical issue. The only thing it ever had is one inject, one or two injectors replaced that were bad on the truck and the glow plugs were shot on the truck after like 250,000 miles or something. I mean, and the truck had already been like 15 years old at that point. But other than that, it didn't have any issues. Um, so I can't, I can't argue there. And that was an automatic truck and it never had a transmission issue, not one. With 290,000 miles on it almost when it was wrecked and totaled out, which by the way, when it was wrecked and totaled, we turned the key I think fired right up and the whole front end was busted up coolant spraying everywhere it started up and it was just yeah just on it went so nothing bad to say about the engine and transmission components however i will say this when my dad's truck did have injector issues it had a couple of bad injectors i don't know if the injectors like broke or the tips broke or they were all worn out i don't know what the issue was entirely the truck pretty much wouldn't drive over 10 miles an hour. It was so sluggish, just blowing a ton of smoke and it couldn't move its own weight. I mean, it, it just, it was out of commission, pretty much done. Um, and again, I don't remember the exact condition the injectors were in what, that made it do that, but it was really, really bad. And the truck, like I said, it pretty much wouldn't move out of its way. I was driving it and I actually called my dad, I'm like, hey, this thing is like just smoking like crazy and it's like, I can't get the thing over 10, 15 miles an hour. Like, it's just like no power. And uh, that's when I had to get taken in and new injectors put in a couple new injectors. But that truck compared to one of these with a couple bad injectors, my buddy, like I said, I had a buddy who went to Colorado in his second gen. So same engine, different fuel system. He had a blown injector line, like the whole fuel line blew and he had drove like 300 miles at highway speeds, not knowing most of that time that that had happened. He just thought, I can kind of smell diesel fuel. That's weird, a little more smoke out of the tailpipe than normal, a little bit of white smoke, but it was at night so he could tell for sure. He's like, it's probably fine, I'm probably just overthinking it because he was kind of paranoid about going that far in an old truck. Ends up finding out he had a totally blown injector line and he still had to drive it like another hour or something to get to the nearest town so he could park it and try to get some parts and replace the fuel line in the parking lot, which is why people love these trucks. And then he drove it back home. I mean, I don't even know, 16 hours or 14 hours. I don't know what it's long drive. Drove it back home just fine. Something happened like that to one of these trucks. I don't think you're going to be driving at 300 miles without noticing any loss of power. And I definitely don't know if it's going to be an easy pull over for an hour and a half and swap out a fuel line in a parking lot. Um, you know, maybe that just has to do with you know, your abilities. But my buddy is not a mechanic. He does construction, not a mechanic. And he did it on his own in a parking lot. No problem. Can't say you'd be able to do the same as easily just by looking at a quick YouTube video and swapping out real quick in a parking lot if you had the same thing happen in a truck like this. These trucks are not as known for their simplistic reliability. These are known for their simplistic reliability. Very reliable and very simple to work on. These are not necessarily hard to work on. If you worked on it for any amount of time, it's pretty easy to get used to. But you would be lying to yourself if you said they were just as easy to work on as one of these trucks and as reliable to keep on going with issues as you are able to with one of these trucks. Now, that also being said, the build quality of these trucks seems to be better overall. Doors, beds, fenders, hoods, dash, seats, overall seem to be built better. Maybe not quite as simple when it comes to the engine, transmission, drivetrain, but overall, probably better build quality when you're looking at all the other overall components of the truck. I tried to be as non-biased as I could, but I've been around both these trucks a long time in terms of the 7.3 Power Stroke. My dad literally drove one my entire childhood. He had it for, shoot, I don't even know, I think over 15 years, almost 300,000 miles on it. And the only reason he got rid of it is because my sister totaled it hitting some black ice. And they paid him more for the truck than anybody would have paid him to sell it outright at the time. And then these trucks, my grandpa, my wife's 
grandfather, you know, he worked at Chrysler for 30 years. He's always had, he's had, you know, several Dodge trucks now in the last, you know, few decades. He loves them, never really has any issues with them, but he's also meticulous about maintenance. And so was my dad with his 7.3. Fuel filters and oil change every time at the same time. Always kept up with stuff on that truck other than like flushing the transmission fluid and stuff. That never got done in all those years and it still never had a transmission problem. But which one takes the cake for you? Which one is your go-to and why? Comment down below. And after you're done commenting, hit the link in the bio. Head on over to lmpgear.com and you can get entered to win both these trucks at the same time right now. But you only have until Sunday. Good luck.